This video goes over chapter 7 through 12, the practice for the final exam. Number one, to solve this proportion, we can cross multiply. On the left, we have 20 times 4w, or 80w. On the right, we have 13 times 3, which is 39. We divide both sides by 80, and our answer is b. The second one, we're finding the slope. So we take the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. On the bottom, since we're subtracting a negative, it's really like adding. And since we're adding to a negative number, that gets closer to 0, which is kind of tricky. The negatives cancel out, and this simplifies to 2 thirds. For number 3, 4 is multiplied by 12 to get to 48. So we do the same thing with 6, we multiply by 12, we get 72. I have matched up number 4, the angles by the colors, uh, green, red, and blue. So that ruled out A and B. And then we had to look at the segments. The segments were all correctly lined up. Which side was bigger and which side was smaller? Was our scale factor 2 over 1 or 1 over 2? And the side with the larger numbers here, like 10, 8, and 6, was bigger, even though the actual top one was physically bigger. So there were some scale issues there, but number 4 was D. For number 5, we take these dimensions, and we multiply by 12 to get to inches, and then we divide by 500 to get to the scale model. D is our answer. We know that number 6 is not proportional, so it's not similar. Uh, 15 over 10 is not a similar scale factor as 10 over 5. B, not similar. Number 7, these are also not similar. If we figure out that H is 50, then G has to be 70, so the angles don't match. We've got to have at least two of the angles that match, then all three would, so 7 is D. There's a couple ways to set up a proportion for number 8, but I chose to say that 32 is to 40 as 24 is to what? And if you cross multiply and solve, you get 30. For number 9, we set up a proportion like this. 12 is to 16 as x minus 2 is to x plus 1. We cross multiply, so then we distribute. We combine like terms and move all the x's to one side and the numbers to the other. We get x is 11. It's not the final answer though. They want to know bd, so 11 minus 2 is 9. A. For 10, so Katoa, uh, the cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, in this case 15 over 17. For 11, uh, cosine is again equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so we plug it in. And to solve for x, we flip things around so it looks like this. And as long as we are in degree mode, we'll get the answer d. For number 12, we set up our triangle like this. x is across from 30, across from 90 is 2x, across from 60 is x root 3. So the tangent of 30 is going to equal to x over x root 3. The x's cancel out, and we have 1 over root 3. The answer is b. You might be thinking we have to rationalize the denominator. We did cover that in class, so we multiply by root 3 over root 3. The problem is we end up with root 3 over 3, not root 3 over 1, or root 3 over 2. So that answer is not on here. That's why b is correct. For number 13, we have our eagle 3,200 feet in the air. That's this part of the triangle. Uh, looking straight forward, but then we're looking 34 degrees down. So that means the angle inside the triangle is actually 56. And then our missing side is the horizontal distance. So I set up a Sokotoa tan 56 is equal to opposite over adjacent. I move 3,200 over, I multiply, and I get 4744 C. Number 14, since I know that the cosine of angle C is 3 fifths, I just take the inverse cosine of 3 fifths, and I get 53 degrees, as long as I'm in degree mode. For 15, this one involves sine, because because we're looking at the opposite over the hypotenuse. And that is 9 over 41. So what we can do is figure out that this is, because this is a right triangle, and we know the hypotenuse 20, and we know one of the legs, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the height, which is 16. And now that we know the height and the length here, 22, take 16 times 22, and you get 352. Formula for area of a trapezoid, you take the base 1 plus the base 2 divided by 2 times the height. So plug all that in. Here's our answer, C, 58. For 18, if our diameter is 12, that means our radius is 6, so the area is pi times 6 squared, or 36 pi, and we're done. 19, they give us the diameter, and the circumference is pi times the diameter, so that's just 24 pi. For 20, these are a little bit tricky. I don't, there's, the ones on the final are, a little, are even easier than this. If you count up the full squares like I did here, maybe you'll get around 28 or 33. And then the partial squares, some of them are about half or different. They say add them all together. If it was me, my range would be somewhere between 33 and 38 or 41 and 44. If you got somewhere near there, you know what you're doing. 
21, it's important to recognize that 3 inches is the diameter, so the radius is 1.5 for this circle. So to find the rectangle, we take 8 times 3, which is 24. And then we subtract the area of this circle, 1.5 squared times pi, divided by 2, because we're only looking at half of it. So if you use 3 there instead of 1.5, you got the wrong answer. That's why C is the right answer. When it comes to cross sections, they're never going to be cylinders, because cylinders are in three dimensions. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, so then we're looking at what shape. Here we see a circle. Uh, this one is probably a square, though we don't necessarily know for sure. The other ones could maybe be squares. They look more like rectangles to me, so parallelogram and rectangle could be used interchangeably here. And this one is a pentagon. For number 23, you can just count them up. And we also use that formula, the vertices minus the edges. So V minus E plus F is equal to 2. That's one way to write this formula anyway. So here if we took 10 minus 20, we get negative 10 plus 12 is equal to 2. And everything checks out. For 24, the prisms have the same shape on the top and the bottom, like these do. Uh, the pyramids will have a triangle on the bottom, and they will all meet at one point on the top. And cylinders look like this. They have a circle plus a height. 25, volume of right rectangular prism, 12 times 7 times 8. 26, surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, plug in 21. There's your answer. Volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, plug in r. Leave your answer in terms of pi. With 28, this was actually supposed to be... 2x plus 9, it just didn't come through in the copy very well. Uh, because these are tangent, that means they are equivalent. So you set them equal to each other, you solve that x is equal to 5. If you plug that in, you get that a, b is 19. We see these little marks here to show the equivalencies. So we can see that the 25y is equal to 30y minus 20. Solve for y, plug it in, 100. For 30, arcs are about their circumference. So the circumference here is 6 pi. And we're going to multiply that by a fraction of the total circle, 138 divided by 360. If we do that, we get b. So when we have this case here, whatever angle this is, which is 25 degrees, the arc is doubled. So it's 50 degrees. And the way this is positioned here uh, across the, the diameter, we know that 15x has to be equal to 90 degrees. Wherever that point c would be along the circle we will form a 90 degree angle there. So we solve for x and we get 6. Writing the equation of the circle, we know that it's the inverse, the inverse, and then 2 squared. So it can't be b because that's just 2. And then this one's wrong, x minus y. And these have the wrong ones with x and y for d. So that's why c was the right answer. The next one, if you reflect across the y-axis, so think about across, the, uh, we were over here, now we're over here. Whatever our x-coordinate is, it's flipped our y-coordinate stays the same. So if I just look at point A, this is going to stay 2, this is going to become a negative 1. That's why the answer is C. Reflections will have a line of symmetry, and if you reflect it across those, you would match up exactly on the other side. This is not that. We see that there's some, a rotation here, or reflection, and a, there's two things going on, not just flipping across a line. Translations just move up and down, left and right. They don't get bigger like this one. They don't uh, flip like this one. And they're not rotated around like this one. So that's why the answer is yes here only. A rotation will have a point that uh, the shape can circle around. And this happens here. If we were to move that, we take this entire piece and rotate it around we would get that next shape. That's not the case with these others. Here we have a line of symmetry. If we were to rotate this one, our little inside of the, the square would still be, it would be like this as we rotate it around. Or excuse me, like this. And because we have changed the orientation, it doesn't work. Uh, plane symmetry is if you were to cut this down the middle in half, you'll have the exact same on the top and the bottom, which this one has. And the same thing here, if we drew a plane right down the middle here, and for this one as well, we could draw a plane right down the middle. 
the symmetry about an axis is imagine if this is a wheel and it has an axis going right through it. If we spun it around, would it always match up? And the answer is yes for both of these. For 39, the dilation means the shape stays the same, it just gets bigger or smaller. That's why D is the right answer. And here for 40, uh, dilations, they shouldn't stretch out more one way than the other. So because this is getting wider, that doesn't work. The, all three of the other ones do.